and welcome welcome this is the clubhouse sponsored by total fitness and health on omnium radio and you're here with owen grace and davy mcgregor how are we getting on folks how's everyone doing so we've got multiple lives on we've got um we've got about four three cameras on us now yeah i'll be looking at one i look at my crowd if you look at your <laughs> my crowd doesn't want to look at you <laughs> <laughs> so how was um how was uh your new year's this is our first show since since the new year it's been great i'm sure we had a great night out for the for the new year you you stayed up till breakfast time and had breakfast on the table for us the next morning <laughs> i don't know what you're on about um how was your trip back to ireland yeah it was class it was great to get back home um for the first time in a long time was home home alone <laughs> um and it was good to just stay around the local and have a few pints and few points of the proper black stuff for once but uh, it was great you were back as well with the wee fella back to the motherland yeah it was um no it was brilliant to be fair one of my best <laughs> is that the kettle <laughs> <laughs> it's it's race, uh, is that the kettle <laughs> the kettle's on the background lads yeah um <laughs> <laughs> just the kettle just the kettle oh yeah uh lovely yeah, um but anyway yeah no, no really good to be home um it was it was uh yeah, probably one of the best trips I've had home in a long, long time now, to be fair. I had the little man back with me, so yep. um, no, really enjoyed it. But how did we Sonny get on? Did he meet all the cousins? Oh, he met everyone, absolutely. 57 of them. He said he met, he met every man in Glanmel. Um, so in the yeah. Halton side. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So um, so uh, that's kind of the intros out of the way. We're, we're looking for... Well, we'd like to hear some um, questions or any shout outs or anything. We've already had some uh, some cool enough questions come in um, from the last show. Um, some good, some bad, but uh, it'd be good to get more. We're trying to get in touch with as many recently. It was kind of the rugby clubs, but not just that, I guess. It was... Um, just reaching yeah, out to anybody. Yeah, whoever's, whoever's, listening. whoever's around. Yeah, <laughs> a few of the rugby clubs. So, um, so keep any, any questions in that coming in. Yeah, we well just you know probably it was a bit of a learning curve from from last time we done it or the first time whatever way you want to put it, um, but just to get a little bit more fluidity in what we're doing. Um, fluidity is a, good word. a big word I learned that <laughs> learned that this year. Yeah, thanks, is. Um, just we got obviously put out on the questions, but maybe things that we need to talk about and stuff or people would like to talk about, and we have a range of topics that we'll kind of link uh, with each other and a few of the things that obviously it's been happening in the last month which we feel is quite interesting is not to bore about the Exeter kind of story and stuff like that but there's a, a couple of new changes that's happened with, with their director or chairman sorry stepping down so we'll be looking at that we'll be looking at some of the other stuff from uh, where are we looking at here? wrong <laughs> yeah so a big thing that what people spoke about which is a serious thing but we will we'll speak about it in as much knowledge as we can know is, is a mental strength and and it mental toughness um as we said before we're, we're not experts in what we say or talk about but at least we might have some stories we can relate about and then we can go on and, and talk about um the conor mcgregor fight and the comeback that's coming to happen so that'll kind of tie in quite nice with the mental strength and obviously he's been out of the game for for a couple of years so i think that'll be a big talking point and then more of it is just a bit of people ask about um salary and welfare differences in rugby we've got the aj winning his uh, fight because obviously we talked a bit about that the last time and then um professional opportunities in the uk i guess it was around rugby mainly wasn't it so um well it was an opportunity for us coming across so that'll be an interesting one yeah absolutely so getting straight into it we've obviously had the big um grudge match between the chiefs and um saracens recently enough it erupted a little bit but i think it was always going to be a little bit of fire in the belly for that one um uh, did you get to see much of it or did you see just the, the highlight reel of the, <laughs> the boxing match that was yeah. in <laughs> scudding match um, no unfortunately just got to see the highlights and uh, I travelled back across with Cush with Rory um, Monday um, from the flight back from Dublin he talked about it and um, obviously Harry Williams got got sent off for it, it sounded worse than it looked worse than it actually was I think he was just running in because of the heat of the moment type thing but no it was always going to be a bit of 50, fisty cuffs and I can imagine that not that it was going to be set out to do that, but I can imagine in the dressing room in the week building up to it that it would have been a mental kind of test. And uh, 
to stand up and be counted, and it was really over nothing. To be quite honest, it wasn't really a brawl at the end of the day. Well, there was a there was a bit of heat in the background, and we won't we won't go into it massively. But I know we're going to get on to as you said, um, Nigel Ray and the uh, and the uh, oh, there's producer Trace. Um, oh, Cheers, oh, Trace. Thank you. Um, and yeah, it's so N- Nigel Ray. Um, stepping down from Saracens and that, but a bit of the kind of past of that was um, ginger nuts. Are you being smart, Trace? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fitting. No, thank you. It's the uh, ginger nuts in there. It's twenty twenty, different me. But anyway, so Nigel Ray stepping down. We'll get to that bit. But so there, there been a bit of blab, uh, blad blood, bad blood um, between the two clubs over what had happened, and there were some comments made around. Um, Obviously, the Chiefs not being happy and every right to not be happy, and I don't think a lot of clubs were, but um, one thing came to the other and, and the grudge match came, and I think it was always going to boil over a little bit, wasn't it? So, Yeah, it's just, uh, again, we talked about it very quickly the last time in saying maybe the players shouldn't be at fault, but I think um, I think it likes the Chiefs and, and the teams in around Saracens, you know, or competing with the Sarts in the last couple of years, they're going to use all that as, as, as a good bit of fight. And I think the big thing as well is um, the Saracens players probably feel a lot of pressure at the moment. Um, so again, I'm not sticking up for them anyway, but I can imagine they are going out on a, on a thin thread because, you know, next year their whole careers could change, you know, so you don't mind that bit of bite. Am I right in thinking they're, are they minus 12 at the minute? Minus, Something like minus that, Minus 12, yeah, and they're, they're about, they're actually not... You know they're not a million miles off. Of what it can it can be done, you know. And I think they're probably going to give a little bit of a uh, extra push in the in the um, European competition because of. Um, I think they they can. They're in that position where they can almost give a bit of the two finger salute to to the rest of them over in the Premiership in a way. Um, and it would be a big one for them, wouldn't it? But well, I think it was Northampton, wasn't it? The year they got relegated, they won the Heineken Cup for. European Cup or whatever it was yeah, yeah, yeah. that year and uh, I backed them for the next year as well just going on because we were talking about so it's it's, it's fairly um, recent news isn't it about Nigel Ray so Nigel Ray um, retired as club chairman um, which is important <laughs> <laughs> um, so Nigel well just a little bit of things I was trying to find out about him he invested in the club in 95 he reclaimed full control of the club actually in buying the kind of majority shareholding in, in 2018 um, and then when the breach of the salary cap um, happened, obviously they got these relegation points deducted. So minus was it thirty five? Thirty five yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. and um, five and, million or something. And but but the salary cap breach was actually over the last three years they were talking about. So it wasn't just it kind of been caught out for for three years, you know. So. Yeah, but we it's funny what we talked about coming over the road, um, in terms of the salary cap and stuff like that, and just listen to a, a supporter, um, a big supporter. For Saracens, um, he does drinking kiddies in, in Plymouth there. He knows who he is, um, little ball fella. <laughs> um, but he he actually made a very good point was the fact that as a, as a supporter, you know these lads that uh, that are involved with Saracens, they're going to stay about Saracens and they have been there a long time and they're going to be there for a long time thereafter. Um, is it a thing that actually the club is in? In investing in them in their future to hold them at the club um, and actually over time if you think of the other clubs maybe the Bristols and, and Harlequins and claims like that have probably spent more money in a shorter period of time with no longevity in it so again I'm not going back to the cheating thing and all that but I'm saying and from Nigel's perspective as a chairman he's held on to you know a bunch of players to, for quite a, a, a long time um, which in some regards, back back then was probably a very intelligent way of looking at it. It just backfired massively, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think well, we talked about talking about it because he um, he was adamant, wasn't he, that that they were very transparent with all their dealings and that. And then, although the club was um, was looking to kind of back out of an appeal and put or sorry put an appeal in and then they they backed out of the appeal and and um it just kind of was a bit of a like they were holding their hands up a bit wasn't it so um but these things happen and and it's funny we'll get on to some it would have would link in quite well with the the money differences and and the different salaries and and not even that just the amount of money clubs have like even if you go from championship rugby to to premiership rugby you know it's it's the second level of yeah. of, of professional rugby in the country and yes 
there's it's chalk and cheese you know and i was reading an article earlier it was actually from 2017 and they were talking that um they're kind of lost with the championship although they've made it what it is it feels a little bit like and i know it's a, a dated column but it seemed like they they were lost back then i wonder where they are now it seems it seems the, yeah, the money just, the money teams are the ones that are always floating around the top isn't it it's yeah. just the way it is but then it, within the same clubs as well there is a huge difference of money you have an academy player or maybe a first year development contract player will be on x amount the scale between that and maybe their highest paid players is massive as well but yet the, the expectations the same the same commitments it's all there um but the championship i think have a lot to a lot to answer for there's a massive um argument around scrapping the championship altogether um and if i suppose if it was scrapped there'd be no relegation for saracens so would saracens then be actually getting the punishment these are all the kind of arguments you could go into but i think the money thing i, I don't know what it was when you first moved over but i had a funny conversation <laughs> yeah funny conversation when i was back at home yeah uh, christmas time you know, I was in my local club, uh, club Monaghan Rugby Club, and just looking at different jerseys on the wall and stuff, and kind of laughing back. And you know, some of the people were asking, you know, where I am now and what I'm at. <laughs> I didn't want to tell them, but um, looking back then, they they have obviously this idea of a professional rugby player. But little did they know, like when I first came over to England, Jesus Christ, I was <laughs> there's three of us on a on a on a contract. And I think it was six and a half, seven thousand or something like that for the year. Yeah. Um, and now it was made that was made up by coaching and a bit of accommodation and stuff like that. But you're a professional rugby player at, yeah. on seven grand a year. Now the argument is, yeah, you're doing what you want to do, and you know, you're the easy to talk it. I know I'm the easy to talk it, but at nineteen years of age, you think it's it's the best it's thing in the, the world. Start you know, as well, and you think yeah. it's another step, and maybe some of the agents have a lot to answer for as well. <laughs> we won't name names. <laughs> no, it's in the names. But look, at that's probably all I was worth of even that. Or, or, but at least, you know, that got me into the into the run in England and um, there's a lot to be said for that. But, you know, when you think back, it's actually, it's, it's desperate. It was like less than half the minimum wage. I know, it's nuts, isn't it? And, and, and I think um, in many in many ways, clubs have the upper hand, don't they? They have, they have um, well, lads and, and girls... Um, I suppose strapped because they know that the opportunity is there and it's kind of like it or lump it in many ways, isn't it? But um, well, look, we'll get on to we'll get on to opportunities in that later on. Um, but I was just going to throw a little spanner in the works and uh, ask you about New Year's resolutions. Did you go down that route? Is New Year's resolutions? <laughs> I was on Cindy's show yesterday and we yeah. talked about it. And on a on a more serious note, she was saying that. Um, she doesn't really believe in him because obviously it's it's teeing you up to fail. But what have you teed yourself up to fail in, Davy? Well, anyone that knows my old fella, um, he has like a doctor. Davy Senior, big shout out. He's a doctor's in nutrition and, and lifestyle management. Um, great way of kind of putting that across. And uh, he just mentioned to me nice and pleasantly um, to go in and get myself something fit looking fit um, <laughs> lose two and a half stone because I'm a fat so no, not, e- so. not even a pig anymore I don't need to so, so um, hence why I'm not taking any biscuits off Tracy tonight but no I'm not going to go down that route too much but I think um, I'd like to get a little bit better <laughs> in how I look after myself maybe um, I think genetically I could start to fill out a bit of it even so <laughs> Um, yeah, I think stay off the biggies. Nice. What about yourself? You're the new vegan now. You're all into that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, well, we won't we won't get into that too much, boy. Killing not, the planet. Well, not doing it for the label. I said I was saying this yesterday. Not doing it for the label. Doing it for myself, really. Um, pure selfishness and just three times more land the need than meat. That's lies, absolute <laughs> lies. Um, but anyway, it's it's as much as the planet is at the very forefront of my thoughts it's it's um it's more to do with health and fitness so i just wanted to see if um there there's part of me that's kind of experimenting a little bit with my training and i I said before christmas and just bringing up the kind of new year's resolutions i didn't want to be the one that just waits till the first of january and then asher will do the long (laughs) the long finger for for three or four weeks before that so actually as you know yourself went um back into the gym properly kind of four weeks ago and 
um yeah it's just been an experiment between that between the diet thing more it was it, there's an element of it that's kind of can you be as strict to go as a because like you wake up and you want a coffee in the morning and you can't have milk in your bloody coffee so it's um it's a big change it is and i think there's part of me that <laughs> it's a big change um, yeah, i'm gonna try this thing that you because you told me because i can't breathe through my nose at the moment i'm gonna try to go off a bit of okay. <laughs> poor claire <laughs> It's trying to go up a bit of dairy. I thought it went lacto free, but it's not lacto free. I think it's the dairy. So I might try that um, as well, just just to try something new because I think that's the thing that comes out of professional rugby. It's very easy to get a bit lazy, where obviously when you're playing or you know you're trying to hit goals, and nutritionist tells you to do something, you generally do it. But now I think it's that self discipline that I need to uh, need to work but on. But e- even just on that, and and it's good you raise that point. It's. Um, the life of a professional, let's just say athlete, well, more so, I suppose, our experience is the, the rugby side. Everything is prescribed. Yeah. Everything is prescribed. You are, you, you're paid to be there. It's like, it, it is work at the end of the day. Yes, we, we loved it and all the rest of it. But um, if you were late for a meeting, you were fined. If you didn't, I mean, the nutrition in many places is highly monitored. Yeah. Um, um, your weights are prescribed. You know your your program for that is prescribed. That's why they've got people doing these jobs. And why I always say there's roles in the sport that isn't just playing the sport. You know, yeah. so there's a lot to do with it. But, but the only thing you go back to the welfare we talk about, like that year as a professional rugby player, you your expectations are hitting certain weights or body fats, whatever it might be. Um, but then you know you only had maybe three on the pound at the end of the month or to spend throughout the month. You weren't eating avocados. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even, I never had heard didn't of even avocados. Know avocado. <laughs> that was the most but, uh, orange. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but what you found was how, what our argument was, how can we keep this professional standard when we're competing against, especially in the championship at Rotherham that time, you're competing against Worcester and the Andy Goods of the world and three or four hundred thousand and all these professionals, um, like an Everton on a plate for them. And there's us scraping the ball and yes, expected to be at a level was was quite frustrating it was it is and it's disciplined I, I think for a lot of people well hopefully people are listening but if people listening in the there is a huge reality to it you know it's not it's very much a it's a grafting uh, it's a grafter's attitude at that age isn't it or even at the early stages or at the level because it's it's very much you're trying to put yourself um on a pedestal through minimum kind of income or minimum uh not not always the best of stuff around you but but what's your advice then so i'm sure there's going to be lots of listeners that's obviously not playing rugby and a professional but working full time and have a lot more harder work than playing rugby any advice very quickly on on a on a on a resolution because it is a thing i don't actually disagree with them sorry i disagree with putting yourself with such a minimum target, I think it should be a, a kind of a whole lifestyle approach. But anyway, any specific advice you'd offer maybe on that? Sense? Uh, well, I listened. I listened to a podcast actually this morning, basing on um, kind of general um, general upkeep. Really, it was just it, he went through ten. Um, this Irish lad, and he went through ten different kind of um, goals as such, or like things you can do to better yourself. But it was all about um, almost. Uh, self improvement and, and and giving yourself uh, not necessarily the challenge. He wasn't big enough that you 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 know I want to be this that and the other in the uh, looks wise or whatever it might be. It was more to do with um, I suppose creating things that would better you. Yeah. So it, it makes sense. So I think in terms of if people want to look a certain way and that you gotta you got to try and set a goal and stick to it but make it achievable and and make it make it things that are step by step and progression and keep consistency like the biggest thing of the the success of the kind of rugby programs or the schedules we had was that sure it was the same thing every week yeah. you could go in doing it you know with your eyes closed at, at, at to a certain level yeah it'd be great to get some of the, the listeners to th- maybe throw on what their resolutions are or any ideas because look at it you know, maybe things you could help other people that's listening as well. It'd just be good to see if uh, if you've been called a fat so during, <laughs> during, during Christmas. You, as a, you fat as a, no, I don't Lovely. want that to stick, please. Um, yeah, so on that note, we're going to um, stick on another tune here. But um, 
if you've got uh, yeah any questions any shout outs any um any new year's resolutions anything you want us to kind of answer do let us know we're on um both our facebook lives um but obviously we're on omnium radio so if you just go to um go to omnium radio on, on online and just click listen in live and and we're there and you'll get just to, about to mention about the old silence in case we're shut down. <laughs> oh, yeah, so well, we'll do that on the break. We'll let the others listen to the music. All right, enjoy this one. <laughs> 